Can the people who are asleep hear me? I think so, yes. Okay, good. All right. So the initial title of my talk was Packages, Repositories, Pipelines, and Promotions. And actually, yesterday evening, I figured out that what it really is about is repositories as code. Um, infrastructure as code, pipeline as code, and this is really about repositories as code. So um, who am I, for the people who've never seen me? Um, I'm Chris. I'm this crazy dude from Belgium who organizes way too many conferences. Um, if you guys talk about DevOps and you say this is not DevOps, you can easily blame me, because I, together with Patrick Dubois, started DevOps days back in Ghent in 2009. Uh, but mostly people blame me when they have DNS problems. Um, my role today, and it's been like that for like 10 years, um, more than 10 years, is that I started, co-founded an open source consultancy company called Inuits. We have teams in Belgium, the Netherlands, Czech Republic, and Ukraine. We're about 80, and we're doing mostly helping people using open source to build whatever they want to build. So why do we talk about repository management? Well, because it's a problem that isn't really solved. When we talk about DevOps, we talk about all of those things. We talk about culture, we talk about monitoring metrics. It's kind of weird seeing OpenHPC still mentioning monitoring tools from a decade ago. Uh, ganglia and stuff. I used to use this because I used to be the open Mosix release manager two decades ago, but things have evolved. And that was what DevOps was about. Talking about automation, talking about improving our tools, going from monitoring sucks to monitoring love. So we talk about build automation, we talk about packaging things, and all of those things. So who's packaging stuff here? A lot of people are. A lot of people are packaging things for different purposes. They package it for inside a distribution. They package it because they're a language. And then there's people who package software in an enterprise, in a company, packages that don't ever have to be shipped to the outside world. So there's different types of packages already. Yet, when you go into the average enterprise, this is how people deploy software. <laughs> or Docker pull some image, whatever. It's the same problem. I mean, RVM, our good friends in the Ruby ecosystem, they promote this is how you install RVM. It's like, it doesn't work, it doesn't scale. So we figured out that we should package all the things. And we do this because, well, KB told us, because we can verify the consistency of a package. Like, has this file been tampered with? Is this file still consistent? We can use it to monitor security. We can use it to monitor dependencies. And we can uniquely identify where a, package, where a file is coming from. Because to me, there are three types of files. There's files that have been packaged that shouldn't be changed. There's configuration, which is a specific file which can be shipped with your package, but it shouldn't be, but it should be tagged differently. Or there's user-generated data log files, actual things that people have uploaded, databases, whatever. And those are three types of files you care about. And if you do infrastructure as code, basically the only thing you need to back up is the user-generated data, because the rest should be reproducible. The rest you should be capable of scratching your stack, playing Chaos Monkey, which I wasn't allowed this afternoon in the data center, and just bootstrap everything again and be up and running. There's a bunch of other reasons why we do packaging like how to ship to weird locations over satellite links, how to do all of those things. But a general consensus for, for a lot of people is that we don't put config inside a package. Maybe the templates, but config is something you want to manage from another point of view. So we take that point of view to a set where we do continuous delivery, the idea that we constantly can ship software in good quality, which is, to me, a security requirement. Like, there's a patch I need to be able to ship. I need to be able to fix my system. We have the idea that we want to take an unmodified and tested artifact and pull that all the way through different environments, having tests, having acceptance, all the way through production. And we need packages. And those packages are immutable artifacts where we know, well, this version, this package, is the one we're actually going to ship, we're actually going to use. 
this is ancient. Back in Mountain View in 2010, we had a huge panel about how do you do packages. And some people were saying, no, we're not going to use packages for PHP deployments or for other applications. And other people said, yeah, well, the rare occasions where your code base changes that fast and you cannot package it, it doesn't happen that much. So typically, always package it because it's going to give you all of the advantages we talk about. And then you see every single language, Ruby, Python, Node, whatever, reinventing that wheel and not working with the communities. I think I gave a talk about that problem at FOSDEM some years ago. But not all packages are equal. I mean, the effort you put into getting a package for a library for something that the open source community is going to use into your distribution is not going to be the same effort you want to put into a package which your local developers have written, which you're never going to ship because it's your software and it's not open source, which the only place we're going to deploy it is your platform. So you're going to use it differently. I mean, we go from I hate to write a spec